Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to review someone's swimming. And uh, I've seen this uh, post on Reddit and the title says here, I'm 19, never touched a body of water in my life. Recently I started going to the gym and I learned how to swim in a week. A week, one week. Drank a lot of water, which is normal. But in the end, I swam. I know how many will laugh because I learned at a late stage. It's never too late. But I'm proud and that's what matters. Good! I like this guy's attitude. And we're going to take a look at his swimming. Uh, I'm going to point out uh, some good things that I saw the scene in this video and the uh, things that he needs to work on. A lot of things that you as a beginner are probably going to do the same thing. I'm going to help fix a lot of these problems that you're probably encountering. So first of all, uh, you'll notice that right off the bat, he's swimming in the deep end. Okay, now this guy said he just started learning in just a week. In one week, you should never attempt to swim in the deep end. It's like you learning how to drive for less than seven days and then going on the busiest highway in your city during rush hour. You would never do that. Same thing with this guy. If I were you, I would attempt all of my practice in shallow water where my feet can touch the ground safely. You should spend the next, I would say, month or two just primarily training in the shallow area of the pool. That's it. N do not go to the deep end unless you are equipped to handle the deep end. And when I say equipped, I mean you're either wearing a life jacket or you're wearing, better, a flotation belt, which is what I recommend all swim swimmers to start off with, okay? Okay, so next thing I notice in this footage is that he's wearing not so proper gear. When you want to practice driving a car, would you practice on a bike? Would you? No. So you can see that he's wearing a snorkel mask and uh, he's wearing some really long baggy shorts and this is what I'm gonna say about these two items. Snorkel mask is a hack but it will not get you to your final destination. Your final destination is breathing on your own, using your own mouth and lungs and system. When you're wearing a snorkel mask, you're crippling yourself. You're handicapping yourself, okay? Snorkel mask is good for snorkeling. Snorkel mask is not good for swimming. This guy, his dream is to swim, not to snorkel. So if you want to swim, you got to put on the right gear, all right? And that means wearing proper goggles and swim cap. That's all you need. The reason why we wear swim caps is not to keep our hair dry. A lot of people have this misconception. You wear a swim cap because, oh, I don't want to get my my brand new colored or permed hair or, you know, exposed to chlorine. No, that's not the purpose of swim cap. A swim cap is to make your head more hydrodynamic, okay? Imagine you have the nose of an airplane covered in hair versus a regular airplane with a nose which is going to fly better in the air, okay? All that hair, it's going to get in the way. Get in the way of your swimming, okay? I remember when I had long hair, my bangs would be like this when I swam. It's just going to get in the way. Hair gets in the way when you swim, especially when you're swimming thousands and thousands of laps. So to counter this, we wear a swim cap. Goggles are like the windshield to our car, okay? You can drive on the highway without a windshield if you want to, but eventually it's going to sting. It's going to get in the way of your vision, okay? So that's why we wear swim, swimming goggles and a swim cap. This guy needs to wear both of them. Now, baggy shorts. Would you drive with a parachute strapped to the back of your car? Most of us wouldn't. And the same thing goes with baggy shorts. I see so many guys wearing baggy shorts or surfboard trunks and all that, or loose-fitted 
scimitar, and all of that all that's going to do is bring you down, weigh you down, make you more heavier, and slow you down in the water. What we all these swimmers do, what I recommend wearing, is something that's tight and compressed to the body. Okay, so for women, it's a, it's a one-piece bathing suit. For guys, it's jammers. Jammers are basically compression shorts that are made for the water. Okay, so first thing that I would work on, he's obviously trying to do front crawl. First thing I would tackle are the legs, okay? We go in reverse order when it comes to front crawl. The legs come first, not the arms. You can see that his legs are doing a, some sort of bicycle kick underneath the water. Now, when we do our front kicking, our flutter kick, we want our legs not underneath the water, not out of the water, but in between, on the surface of the water, okay? When our legs are down underneath the water, it's like kicking in quicksand. It's going to tire out your legs really fast. When our legs are out of the water or in the air, it's counterproductive because we're not grabbing enough of the water in, a, in order to push ourselves from one, in, one direction to the other. Okay, So we got to find that balance, that in-between, where we're kicking, our legs are splashing, fluttering, not spanking, fluttering along the surface of the water. And the best analogy to this in my opinion, is a tugboat. When you look at a tugboat, it, it travels through the water very slowly, but you can see it, the water, how it uses the water. Right? To its advantage. Slowly. And the smallest tugboat can tow the biggest you know, cruise ship in the world. All right? So think about that kind of power that you can possess if you optimize your kicking, kicking along the surface of the water. Now, as far as his body position, his body position is pretty good actually. It's, it's lined up along the surface of the water. It's just that his legs are slowing him down and his, sh his shorts as well. But you can see his torso, his mid torso, his upper back is along the surface of the water. He's not, he doesn't look like this. I've seen swimmers look like this before. This is their, you know, their upper body and torso in a 45 degree, but he's more like this and his legs are dangling, which is pretty common. Not bad. And as for his arms... Uh... So it's, it's interesting because he's doing front crawl kicking, but breaststroke arms. So he's taking the best of both worlds in his mind, which doesn't work. All right. Ideally, when you're doing front crawl, you want to do front crawl arms. And when you're doing breaststroke, you want to do breaststroke arms along with a whip kick. A whip kick. Because when you're doing breaststroke arms, you're pulling your body up and your head comes up constantly. Okay. When you come up for air, this is what you look like when you do breaststroke. Down, up. Okay. So once I pull my head out of the water, my body goes into a 45 degree angle. And what happens, my flutter kicking is kicking in quicksand again. So to counter that, we do a whip kick instead. A whip kick is a lot more efficient because it counters that 45 degree angle that we're at, okay, like this. Breaststroke, breathe, and then whip kick, push. It, push, so it looks like a folding chair. Breathe, push, breathe, push. That's the motion of breaststroke. But when we're doing front crawl, we're constantly looking like this, okay? We're turning side to side for side breathing, breathe on this side, and then breathe on that side, okay? So think about that. You have to choose which angle you want to work on. You want to do the 45 degree angle, then you stick with whip kick and bro stroke arms. If you want to, you want to continue along the surface of the water, then you're going to do front crawl with side breathing, flutter kick, and front crawl arms, okay? So if I were this guy, I would work on the flutter kick and the front crawl first because breaststroke is a lot harder to master or to learn in the beginning. It's a lot more uh, mechanics involved. It's, it's a lot like learning jazz in the beginning if you've never even picked up an instrument in your entire life. Whereas front crawl is like learning pop rock for the first time. It's a lot easier to understand. 
for a beginner. Okay, so for this guy, I would just work on just giant windmill arms in the beginning. There's no shame in windmill arms. And the way we practice windmill arms is by holding a kickboard out in front. Just swapping one arm, boom, of the other. Whoop, boom, like that. All right, so let's take a look. Yeah. And uh, you can see, I can see, that he's, he's pulling way beyond, way beyond his reach, okay? If you, if you are trying to attempt a breaststroke arm pull, it should not go beyond, never go beyond your armpits, okay? You pull and you stop here, near your armpits, okay? You never pull beyond. When you pull beyond, you're going into butterfly territory. And butterfly, if you've ever attempted butterfly in the water, it's really taxing on the body, okay? That's only for advanced swimmers. And butterfly is like sprinting, okay? You can't do butterfly for hours on end. Nobody can. Not even the elite Olympists, athletes can do it, okay? You're going to get really tired. It's just like sprinting on dry land. You're going to get tired really fast. So, know which arm movement you want to attempt. If you want to do butterfly, where you go beyond your armpits, then you're going to have to do dolphin kicks to compensate the butterfly arms, okay? Because butterfly, just like breaststroke, it's going to look like this in the water, just like ooh, 45 degree. So, yeah, stick to the arm, one arm over the other, do the windmill arms with a kickboard. Work on your flutter kick, kicking along the surface of the water. Wear a flotation belt if you want to or if you have to swim in the deep water, but a better solution is to swim in the shallow end. And get the proper swim attire if you're going to practice swimming, not snorkeling. So that means wearing a swim cap, wearing proper goggles, and uh, jammers, which are like compression shorts. And uh, yeah, overall, I think this guy is going to do really well. Why? Because he looks really comfortable in the water. You can see, you can, you can tell by his body language. He, he's, he looks very comfortable. He's not really, he's not kicking strenuously. His arms aren't moving like nervously. You can tell those people. I can tell those students. You know, they're really tense and nervous. And they're really scared. But this guy, he, he's not wearing any life jacket or flotation belt, and he's in the deep water, and he's attempting this in a week, and he looks really comfortable. So I think he's going to go really far. Uh, I wish this guy good luck, and uh, yeah, if you want to take a look at his Reddit post. I'll drop a link down below in this video and if you have any more questions, please join our Facebook group. All the links are down below in this video and uh, happy swimming in the summer 2021. My name is Justin. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.